Tired of looking like a fool when your drinks aren't cool? <laughs> Tired of losing the spotlight because you were up all night? Introducing the sweet six pack flavor from Gamer Subs. Now you can turn League of Legends flaming into amazing all day gaming. The secret is the incredible flavor and multitude of vitamins that keep you with a KDA that's sure to stay. Just mix in a tiny amount of sweet six pack into water and enjoy. Increase or decrease your amount for more flavor and energy or go with the cat caffeine free option to savor that great taste. Competitors give you a huge scoop and only have around 50 servings, but Gamersub Sweet Six Pack only needs a tiny amount, meaning no chalky texture. And if that's not enough, one single tub of Sweet Six Pack is 100 servings. All of this for only $39.99. That's right, $39.99. But wait, there's more. If you use code Bricky on your purchase, you will save 10% off your entire order, guaranteed. And quick, for this special TV offer. Right now, if you use code Bricky, you will save 10% off not just Sweet Six Pack, but the entire website. That's right, 10% off all of Gamersup's amazing products. Try the delicious high protein sus snacks, or perhaps get yourself an amazing shaker cup that's sure to impress. Order now using the link in the description and use code Bricky to save 10% off your entire order. Sweet six pack from Gamersups. Buy now. Now please welcome the star of Twisted Metal, a nominee tonight for best adaptation, Anthony Mackie. Beep, beep, God. So, so. The Video Game Awards, the VGAs, is not something I had initially wanted to make a video on. Uh, Jeff Keighley has founded the VGA since 2014 and owns, hosts, and produces the program. Naturally, with an event of this scale, there are many other people who are involved, planners, deal makers, event staff, so on and so forth. For the most part, the Video Game Awards have been relatively smaller, but still of a sizable scale for an industry that never really got an award show similar to the Oscars. Uh, this has changed a bit over the last few years, and it's become a lot more of a larger scale event. And for the most part, it seems like it's created a feeling of legitimacy to both the industry and general audiences. There is just one little problem. The Oscars, for all their issues, for all their bad jokes, annoying hosts, and general dick-sucking nature of it, the Oscars are an award show. And this year's video game awards totaled roughly... 19% of the actual show being awards. Roughly 40 minutes of the three and a half hour plus runtime. So let's talk a little bit about this. I actually really like award shows. Uh, we actually used to make the Oscars a whole family event. We would get together and often make some kind of meal themed after one of the best picture nominees and have a little piece of paper with all of our predictions and the person who got the most predictions right won something. Normally it's never really mattered much but still won something. Point being it's pretty long gone now but it did leave a void for that award show hype. It's fun to watch people be excited to congratulate other people people. It's just such a wholesome concept in its base form. Of course, video games are a much more recent medium uh, than the world of filmmaking, so the up and up of the prior VGAs has been a bit slow. But looking at it now, I think we have generally grabbed the feeling of the Oscars of video games while still being just just scuffed enough and just a little cringe to make it genuine. Uh, we all know if mom and dad were watching the VGAs with us, seeing Iron Mouse win an award would definitely make them pretty fucking confused. So we open with the 2023 awards, and you'll find I do have a lot of negative things to say today, which you know I don't love, but I do want to open with a positive. This shit isn't on cable. It is watchable for free online, YouTube, Twitch, and elsewhere. And it is still watchable now. The link to the entire VGAs will be in the description, and it's free outside of the usual YouTube ads. That is just fantastic, and is a huge factor into what we may be discussing later. The show opens with a pre-ceremony from Sydney Goodman, who I think does a pretty decent job overall presenting. She doesn't slip up much, or really at all, sticks to the script, just 
really professional stuff. Uh, it also immediately starts with an advertisement for a remake of the Brothers game, so we're off to a good start. She rattles off a lot of the relatively smaller awards, specifically Best Family Game, and Mr. Doug Bowser himself comes on side stage to accept the award, which is a fascinating thing to see as the award show goes on. We'll discuss that later. We get another ad for a game by the Inscription folks, which looks absolutely acid trip inducing. Also, Pro CD Jump Scare, including this new game, seven total video game ads are played before the next award is brought up. Seven game ads before innovation and accessibility. They then go through all of the esports stuff, and it's pretty funny how fast they just rattle through those. Athlete, coach, event, game, and team are all just done immediately without anyone to collect the award on screen. It just flies by. And based on the audience reaction, nobody seemed to care much anyway. Of course, sandwiched between all of those awards are more game advertisements, and it's unfortunate that I have to refer to them in such simplistic terms, because some of them, the advertisements that is, genuinely look really good, like the new game from the Dead Cells team, but it also is a real jarring thing watching the game announcements go from advertisement back to Sydney and then back to advertisement. You would kind of assume that they would just go back to back each of the new announcements before bringing her back to give an award, but most of the time she's just there to announce another announcement. And this happens throughout the entire opening 30 minutes before Jeff himself finally takes the stage. So for the most part, the intro to the main body of the show is pretty damn good. Jazzes everyone up, keeps up a good energy, and then Christopher Judge takes the stage to deliver one of the strongest lines of the entire show. But fun fact, my speech was actually longer than this year's Call of Duty campaign. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> the first major award went to Best Performance and was given to Neil, who voiced Asterion in Baldur's Gate 3. This wasn't something I was particularly surprised by, even with such a loaded category. But this initial start to a decent show was already soured by having the music play Neil offstage immediately during his speech. One thing I will say, please, if that's okay, the community has reached out to so many of us at Larian and said they were seen and they were represented by this game when they lost hope, they felt isolated, they felt alone, and this game brought them together and gave them something to push through to help them all. And to you, I wanna say thank you so much for seeing us. I appreciate it. You're not alone in this, none of us are. Thank you. So, in case you're not aware, Christopher Judge voices Kratos. I mean, come on, listen to him. Good evening, everybody. And he gave a whopping eight minute speech at the Game Awards last year, hence the initial Call of Duty joke. This obviously ate into a lot of the time, so nominees were briefed this year that they had only 30 seconds for their speech when they received their awards. This is obviously significantly too short and a massive overreaction from a long speech last year. And it especially hurts when it's clear Neil was extremely moved by his award and had genuine things to say when he was up there. You know, if he's rattling off the name of every single person he ever worked with, that's one thing. But he was trying to make a genuine poignant statement and the music just kind of pushed him away. It's even more painful to see when right afterwards, after a celebration of a performance of a video game character is concluded abruptly, we get actor Matthew McConaughey up there with triple the amount of speech time allotted to him to advertise a game he voices in. The video game that I'm premiering is the first ever video game Yay. That is a major point I wanted to discuss. The amount of emphasis on mainstream celebrity talent in the Game Awards feels forced. When it's the Oscars, people who present are normally the prior award winners or another actor in this space. This is, of course, by design because the Oscars are for movies and actors star in movies. Wow. Oh my God. Having Christopher Judge present the award for best voice talent to the new one this year was 
perfect. However, we get a lot of celebrity cameos in this show. Matthew McConaughey, Jordan Peele, Anthony Mackie, Gonzo, most importantly, and the main character from Lies of P. For the most part, they don't really have a point to be there. They are there for star talent alone, with a slight exception to the Jordan Peele part. Now, the Oscars have been declining for many years, and it's not fair to relate these two constantly, but there is still a point for certain individuals to take the stage. Matthew McConaughey being up there because he's voicing a guy in a game and having triple the amount of time to show off that game compared to the speech where someone was just played off winning the award for being the guy voicing someone in a game is just a little weird. Like, cool. Anthony Mackie is in that Twisted Metal show that is nominated for Best Adaptation against The Last of Us, Lamau. We can get him to present. Timothy Chalamet literally just looks like the Liza P guy, and that's about it. So let's give him Game of the Year as his presentation. The best award presentations in this show were the ones provided by other people in the gaming industry. Vince Sampella taking the stage uh, did get my heart fluttering for Titanfall 3, but uh, he was the star talent I wanted to see see here. Matt Mercer gave out an award as well. And I mean, he is a veteran of this industry. M Miana M M Mina, Mina Jurgens, oh, I'm so sorry, was also opening a trailer for Hellblade 2, but came with the Hellsung, sorry, band live performance as well with this absolute baller drum guy. <laughs> Despite how popular video games are, this kind of award show with these kinds of nominees shows a real dedication to gaming as an art, gaming as a craft, and having the right people advertise that and be on stage matters a lot. I understand the want to go hard into the mainstream star power for these shows, the want to legitimize ourselves, the gaming community to the wider populace. But I genuinely can't think of a scenario where someone says without an ounce of sarcasm, hey, Matthew McConaughey announced a game he's in at that game award, so you should really watch it. I'm not saying there needs to be none. Keanu Reeves did a fantastic job way back when, but not having Miyazaki, whose game won last year, present the award for Game of the Year just feels off. Or at least having someone, some veteran of the gaming industry present that award. And it feels even more off when so much of that time is dedicated to advertising. Kojima enters the room with a giant golden pin of his game studio emblem, along with Jordan Peele to talk about a game that will be released in about 15 fucking years, then sandwich that with a five minute talk to a Muppet, only then to show off another Fortnite trailer, but you played off best performance. The show is often at ends with what it looks like it wants to be. Jeff also does the Summer Games Fest, something I attended in person, and it felt a lot like the VGAs in more ways than one. A new version of E3 created from the rubble and entirely meant to advertise some of the new products. The Summer Games Fest was a fun show, but it's not what the video game awards should be. I, I think about one of the good presentations, right? Ed Boon came out to award best narrative, and it was a fine opening. Speech was good, nominees were solid, and Alan Wake 2 won it. So Sam Lake had his speech and was of course told to get off the stage extremely quickly. Despite the immediate playing him off, this was mostly how I'd hope this kind of show would go. Then right afterwards, Akumi Nakamura in her big bubbly personality spent far longer than the entire entire speech to talk about her new game studio that doesn't have a publisher yet. So it's not even an advertisement for a game necessarily, it's an advertisement to get funding for the game during the game awards. It just feels weird. It feels like the show is embarrassed to give out awards, and that is the running theme. Right after this is another multitude of game ads, and that fucking gonzo segment before they even get back into showing off another award. This one was for a debut indie game and it went to Cocoon, which was not expected, but neat. Now there is a lot 
to talk about with the Indie Game Awards, and this is something that I don't think I have a lot of great opinions on because it's a complicated situation. Indie games are meant to be independently published, aka you don't have another major publisher, you're not being funded by EA, whatever it might be. That's the point of indie, but you and I know indies as generally smaller games with smaller crews. The weird controversy of this Game Awards was something like Dave the Diver, which many people call an indie game, is actually funded by a major corp, which is Nexon. Despite the game having a cute pixel art and most likely a much smaller team, it's still got big money behind it. The other issue is if you go with the actual definition of indie, the actual independently funded thing, that puts Baldur's Gate 3 in that category. And I don't think it's quite fair to put that game along with Cocoon. So there's a huge disconnect and issue on how you handle indie games. Some recommend it to have a certain budget that only reaches a certain amount. Some say there is a team number that has to be a certain amount or lower. It's very difficult to truly explain that kind of thing, especially when, for me, the best indie game of the year was Lethal Company. But that's a conversation that requires a massive amount of changing and discussion to really figure out, and it's not something that I think I'm smart enough to regularly handle. What was more interesting to me was a general disconnect between people when Cocoon had won the award. Now, the, the phrase robbed is used a lot during the VGAs, but I always found that it was utilized for the wrong games. Like, Pizza Tower was the expected winner of this award, the debut indie game. And I had never heard of Cocoon ever. And this is my job. So few other people probably did as well. Pizza Tower losing is, of course, as we always know when it comes to award shows, a robbery, despite knowing full well nobody who said it was robbed probably played Cocoon. Cocoon! Oh, wow. Wow. That's an upset. Holy shit. That's a huge upset. Chat, you can't be mad. You can't be mad. You probably didn't play it. I know you didn't. Don't lie. Did you play Cocoon Bricky? No, I didn't. That's why I'm saying we don't know. That disconnect I noticed the most, mainly during performance and narrative. Yuri Lowenthal is a staple VA in the games industry for a long, long time and is fantastic. But there is a massive demographic of gamers that probably only played Spider-Man 2 out of all of the games nominated this year. So the confusion when Neil won for Astarian was palpable, especially if you watch this with the YouTube chat on, which I would not recommend. The fact that people were shouting for Spider-Man 2 in the best narrative category against all of that competition kind of shows that they just did not play any other games. It's the same folks clambering for Avengers Endgame to win Best Picture. And it's also why Spider-Man got seven nominations and zero wins, while the real game of the year, Armored Core 6, got one nomination and one win. 100% fucking win rate, baby. We making it out of room a call with this one, boys! Armored yes! 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 Congratulations. I feel a little bad saying this because Spider-Man 2 is a solid game. It got nominated for a ton of awards, but I'm gonna just say the cringiest thing of my entire life, okay? So just put the, the nerd emoji. Just put that on. All right. The people who think Spider-Man was robbed are not real gamers. Take that off. That way, I'm gonna need a shower. It's Jonathan on the varsity football team who got a PS5 from his dad so he can play Spider Man, and that's the only game he played this whole year outside of grinding Fortnite and COD Warzone. These people aren't stupid, they just have a limited frame of reference. They only become stupid when they refuse to open their frame of reference while remaining adamant they're right. Nobody who played the highest caliber of games this year had any doubt that it was going to be Baldur's Gate Sweep. And that's exactly what happens. In a sense, I'm very glad the VGAs do tend to stick to their guns when it comes to who they award. It's nice that while there are some outlandish nominees like Starfield for Best RPG, oh my god, or Bungie for Community Support, oh my god, they at least didn't win. And for the most part, the awards did go to the people who I believe deserved it. None of the rewards really felt like massive dark horse things, except for maybe Cocoon, but even then I doubt most of you play Cocoon anyway, so I don't think we have a great, I mean, I didn't, I don't have a great frame of reference for it. But for the most part, 
I don't think almost any award that went somewhere went to the wrong place. And also in between the awards, there are signs of ads done right. There is a, a funky mixture though, between ads and ads, between typical commercial ads and ads like Summer Games Fest ads. In a sense, Kojima's WWE entrance in discussion with Jordan Peele isn't in its own right a bad thing. And it's a fine way to have an advertisement for the show. Rebecca and Megan of Warframe, two people I have personally met back when I went to TennoCon during a much cringier time in my career. Hey, how's it going, forehead gang? And we're able to discuss the new updates and expansions to Warframe. Not just that, but Rebecca has gone from community manager to creative director with Megan taking her place, which is a wild promotion for the two of them, and in my opinion, is exceptionally deserved. Even if I'm, you know, not super hot on Warframe right now. There was an excellent segment from Abu Bakar Salim. Oh, I really hope I did that right. Uh, looking just dripped the fuck out, by the way. Talking about his relationship with video games and his father, showing off a sort of Ori in the Blind Forest style game. Like all of these segments fit really well in a show like this. Talking about new games, new ideas, new projects. This is a fine thing to have. And especially since there are no normal cable advertisements in the the show, so it's good to have them. The problem is when they're so heavily outnumbered and outweigh the showtime of the actual awards in the show. Not to mention, they have their ad breaks anyway, where they show off another five video game trailers between talking about video game trailers. Strap in, Newty. Things are about to get so let's move on. A multitude of awards were again rattled off, including some pretty major ones like best score. Not giving that a moment to shine is also quite strange, considering it's, you know, music kind of kind of important. From here on, though, the awards go roughly how you'd expect with what I've been mentioning so far. Anthony Mackie takes the stage and riffs with an audience we cannot hear from home. Apparently it was better in person, but online it seemed really strange. The Keanu thing was a one-off. Stop trying to recreate it. We had a few more people coming up to discuss their games. Sean Murray decided that overpromising for No Man's Sky wasn't enough the first time and just totally did it again. Let's hope this time it launches the way we want it to. Uh, the highlight for the entire show for me was the musical number Heralds of Darkness for Alan Wake 2. I haven't played Alan Wake 2 and have fleeting memories of Alan Wake 1, specifically remembering the game's combat being pretty ass, but Alan Wake 2 has been talked about excessively the entire time it's been out, and the music number was truly amazing. Choreography was great, the song itself is just fantastic, it genuinely made me want to check out the game, and, and who knows, maybe I'll get to it at some point. At the end of it all, it culminated into a reveal for a new Monster Hunter game game as the big exciting show ender, with Timothy Chalamet taking the stage to award Game of the Year. I will admit the use of Timothy's old YouTube handle as the entrance was a, a pretty deep cut reference from Jeff and that was good. Modded Controller 360! For the most part, his whole presentation was actually pretty good. It was short, concise, and sweet, serious, and to the point. He was the best celebrity presenter by far. Game of the year after a pretty great orchestra with some absolute chat on the flute, uh, went to Baldur's Gate 3, to nobody's real surprise. Accepting the award in full plate armor, Sven, Sven, that guy, uh, he went up and thanked everyone for his award, as well as giving some truly heartfelt discussion uh, for a few people who passed away before being able to see this day. Uh, he was also not played off by music, and while I'm sure he was told to hurry his ass up by the projector, at least they didn't cut him off while making a tribute to his lost colleagues. Thank God. I know I kind of flew through the back half of this show, but the main points I wanted to get across I had already mentioned. Uh, ironically, unlike this video, my mood was a lot more jolly when I was streaming the award show. I was more than happy to share the experience of watching it with my chat, and only after did the sourness kind of come back into focus. So it's clear. I really like Jeff. I've actually met him before for a short period of time, and I have full confidence that he does genuinely give a shit. From 2014 to now, we have seen the ups and downs of his productions, and he has come a long way from his original Mountain Dew and Doritos ad image, a, an image I hold in very high regard. He really does seem like he cares a ton about the industry and generally is good at his job, but the percentages of this show 
we're all off. And the reason I'm unsure, and the point I made earlier with the whole this is not on cable situation, it's not pay-per-view either, is that I don't know how much this costs. I don't know exactly what guests have to pay to be there and what guests he pays to have. You know, it's obvious some game show and are paid to Jeff to help him fund this event. But I wonder how much of that money is spent on getting someone like Matthew McConaughey to even show up. Idris Elba was nominated and he didn't even show up. There is a large portion of that audience that is expected to get a ticket to this show for free. That audience you see, a good portion of them either had their ticket comped or were paid to be there to a certain extent, I'm sure of it. So you don't really make a whole lot of money from attendance alone. It makes me wonder how much better suited it would be if he didn't need to pay out the ass for some of these celebrity cameos and kept it industry specific. Like, I think I speak for a ton of people when I say, despite Timothy Chalamet having a very solid, concise, decent speech, having Jennifer Hale announcing an award or, you know, other other industry major players like Troy Baker instead of Anthony Mackie's failed audience banter <laughs> would be both more fun and cheaper. But more than anything, I would like to see fewer total awards and a few more with a bit more oomph. For example, as a content creator myself, I just don't think that category matters. The streamer awards already exist and it feels like such a random spot. This goes double for all the esports awards. Coach, player, team events, all of these things feel like they really don't mix in an event such as this. It's not that they're not important, it just doesn't really feel like it mixes well. Especially when you see how fast they rattled off all those awards just get them over with. Makes you wonder why even bother. Oh, and most anticipated game is such a disgusting category. Oh boy, I can't wait to give a game an award for most hyped, especially with the amount of unfinished games and we will fix it later issues we see in modern gaming right now. Just do away with that and never let it return. I would much rather there be a heavier emphasis on gaming performances and certain things like story writing. I mean, narrative is already there, but sometimes just things like scripts and that kind of talent is woefully underrepresented. Voice acting are the mini celebrities of the gaming world and taking every single title in the year and putting it into a singular best performance feels like wasted potential. I wouldn't really mind it if they did it the same way the Oscars did where it's actor and actress in a leading and supporting role. Now, I mean, if you don't want to segment it by gender, there's other ways you could do it. But point being, having all of the performances to one single award doesn't feel like enough. And it's not presented well either. When it comes to the movies and that kind of acting, they show a whole little scene with them. You know, you have your Oscar performance, your Oscar scene. Having like even half that time dedicated to some more voice acting would be nice instead of just playing a sound bite or two as the game goes on. Also, emphasis needs to be put on score and music as well as art direction. There was so little presence in those awards from the show, yet they are massive aspects of games. Art direction is just such an impressive quality that takes so much effort and dedication to make realized and having it just kind of be there and be done feels so off. I can't believe no one accepted a thing for music. You had multiple musical performances on your show, but did not let anyone go on stage to accept an award for music? Like 19%, 19% of the video game awards were awards. This is a somewhat generous percentage too, because it included things like the game of the year orchestra. And that leads to that final question, which is I don't know the funding costs of this event. I'm sure it's millions of but it wouldn't suck to spend more time on the awards at the video game awards. More time discussing the aspects of gaming that we as major fans of the industry want to see and less time with random celebrity cameos and advertisements. I really think Jeff is so close though, you know? Security tightened up since last year, so no weird Bill Clinton kid. Like, I don't think anyone messed up their lines, no stage issues, music was all solid, just everything seemed right. It just needs a better balance and one that can be afforded. 2024 is a year that I'm a little nervous about. Uh, this year saw a record number of people being laid off from the video games industry and no mention of it is a bit sour in the VGAs, though I struggle to find a way to mention it tactfully. Often things swing in a pendulum. This year brought us some of the best releases in a decade and then that means there is going to be a relatively quiet year too. I would like to take a better stab at the best games of the year coming 
coming up. Uh, if anything, I would love to do my own little solo award show at some point, just for fun, not in direct competition, not that I could ever hold a candle, but perhaps it's time to expand my horizons a bit more also. I fear playing the brand new thing, uh, not because I don't necessarily want to, but I don't like being particularly negative, as I've said in the past. Planning a video on a new game has a higher chance of me possibly disliking it and therefore not making a fun video of me talking about a game I liked to play a decade ago like I've done so often. We only have one more video this year to round out 2023 from me, and after that we will be in a brand new year. I am excited for the VGAs in 2024, quite a bit actually, because I think the ball has swung in both directions and we might finally be able to meet in the middle. Until then, I think Jeff is so close. More awards in the award show, fewer advertisements, fewer celebrity cameos. Keep it internal, keep it fun, longer speeches, make it about the awards. And, you know, I think that's fair enough criticism. Until next year, I hope you enjoy my commentary. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to buy this hoodie, it's, crim it's Crimbus. You can buy a Crimbus hoodie. It's very comfy. Uh, that's down in orchidate.com, link in the description, or check out that gamer subs thing I mentioned earlier in the video. Thank you all very, very much. And uh, I'll see you with one more video before the end of the year. Toodles. Come on. Obviously you're a skater.